across our world we live, in cities and villages, all part of a greater whole, but we're not alone. They come in herds, hives and swarms, packs, tribes and pairs, living in nature, members of society. On the great plains of Africa, some of the mightiest animals on earth share space with the smallest. In one of the greatest areas of nature, untouched by man, all manners of wilderness come together in great numbers, or all alone. Through the periodic wet and dry seasons, the corresponding weather greatly dictating the behavior of the entire ecosystem, as food becomes either abundant or scarce, respectively, particularly affecting the many species of great herbivores, most being herd animals, though of varying sizes, social structures, pair bonds, parental relationships and outcasts. They are the heart of the African wilderness, none the least that of the wildebeest. A genus of antelopes, itself a group of bovine. Wildebeest are distinct from other antelopes by sight and behavior alike, divided into two species, the black wildebeest and the blue wildebeest. Standing at four and a half feet tall, eight feet long and up to 600 pounds. They can be found throughout Namibia, Angola, South Africa, Botswana, Zambia, Zimbabwe, Mozambique, Tanzania, and Kenya. In open plains, shrublands, and woodlands, mountainous or flat. They are among the most ubiquitous herbivores in the continent, active both day and night, feeding most exclusively on grass. Though when grass is in short supply, they have been known to feed on shrubs and trees as well. Occasionally coming in great herds of thousands of individuals, Though the average size of a herd outside of migration is typically limited to 20 to 30 individuals, centered around the loose structure of females and their calves, along with few territorial bulls. The herd being limited to two or three ranges corresponding to the wet and dry season, occasionally having an intermediate range as well. The wet season range being the smallest, often at 200 acres or less while the average dry season range is near 400 acres. The blue wildebeest performing an annual migration to new grazing grounds around May or June, gathering in huge numbers up to one and a half million individuals, along with hundreds of thousands of other animals such as zebras and gazelles who follow the wildebeest to their new grazing grounds, covering distances of up to a thousand miles making it one of the greatest natural animal phenomenon in the world. As such immense herding takes place, wildebeest are required to be highly social and communicative, using body language and vocalizations and olfactory communications, a male's bellow being loud enough to be heard over a mile and a half away, while urination and defecation as well as preorbital glands near the eyes and pedal glands on the feet aid in olfactory communications. Wildebeest often rubbing their heads and faces on each other's backsides for social contact, mother and child recognition, and conflict management. While both male and female grow horns, there are subtle differences between them, including the size and angle. Mating season, known as rut, lasts three weeks a year, and usually coincides with the end of the rainy season when the wildebeest can feed on the lush green grass as well as minimize risk of predation due to decreased predator abundance. Females usually maturing at 16 months of age, while males can take up to two years. Though the males become aggressively territorial and mostly succeed in mating only at four years of age, they do not normally form permanent pair bonds shown to engage multiple mates in a single season. During each rut, the old males establish small territories by calling and herding, usually around less than an acre in size, as well as infighting between males known as sparring. 
They do not eat or sleep as long as mature females are in the vicinity, instead focusing their entire attention on the females by serenading them with hums, croaks and bellows, and herding large groups of females together into their territory. Once a male has gained access to a mate, the female remains close by, mating dozens of times to ensure conception. After which, bachelors, pregnant females, females who recently gave birth and older calves are all segregated into separate groups. The gestational period of wildebeest is typically 8 months, with a newborn calf weighing approximately 45 pounds. The period immediately after birth being the most crucial as the calf is imprinted by the female, the mother staying close to her offspring to ensure that the offspring will recognize her by scent alone and vice versa. After which the calf learns first to stand, then to walk within 6 to 8 minutes after birth. Up to 500,000 calves are then born between February and March during the start of the rainy season. Able to keep up with the pace of the herd within days, the young calf stays close to his mother for the first few months, protecting it from predators, with males often remaining at the outer rim of the herd to help protect the more vulnerable calves as well. The calf gains independence at 8 months of age and is commonly considered fully grown at 16 months. The average life expectancy of wildebeest is typically around 20 years old. It is during the first year that wildebeest are the most vulnerable to predation, often targeted by lions, cheetahs, hyenas and African wild dogs. Despite common perception, wildebeest overall are most vulnerable when in larger herds than small as individuals tend to be less vigilant in great numbers, though the individual risk of predation is much smaller. Once a predator is spotted, the herd gathers closely while braying and bellowing loud shrill alarm calls to alert others as to the location of the predator, as well as stomping the feet to intimidate it. With males and females who recently gave birth being aggressive pursuers of predators chasing them off, wildebeest respond similarly to alarm calls made by other animals such as gazelles and baboons. With smaller animals aside from predators often trailing the wildebeest herd for scavenging and protection. Wildebeest often specifically group together with smaller groups of zebras whenever faced with an open savanna environment to reduce risk of individual predation. Though they remain segregated, the wildebeest and the zebras effectively form a cross-species herd or larger cohesive group. While the wildebeest still retain their inner herd mentality, our so-called swarm intelligence, wherein despite having the appearance of a large group of individuals chaotically moving alongside each other. The herd actually systematically explore, analyze and overcome obstacles as a single entity. An instinct that sometimes even overcomes individual survival with weaker individuals often separating themselves, falling victims to predators such as crocodiles, or drowning when crossing rivers, so that a herd can move on otherwise intact. Prioritizing the herd as a social unit within the animal society. Among the most archetypal animals of the plains of Africa is the African elephant. The largest animal walking on land today, the African elephant measures up to 13 feet high, weighing 15,000 pounds, the only surviving family of the order of Proboscidea. They are more closely related to manatees and dugongs than any mammal on land, yet they share the same habitat and much of the same food sources as many ungulates or hooved animals. The African elephant is divided into two subspecies, the bush elephant and the forest elephant, the bush elephant being the larger and more common of the two. They are exclusively herbivores and frugivores, feeding on grass, leaves, fruits, bark, roots and shrubbery, known to have an immense impact on the environment wherever they pass, each full-grown elephant feeding for between 16 and 20 hours a day consuming as much as 330 pounds of food and 11 gallons of water, decimating plant life, flattening entire forests to woodland areas, moving 6 to 12 miles per day to accommodate their need for sustenance. Even as far as over 100 miles when the food sources are scarce, elephants come in large to medium-sized herds of varying numbers, 
they form complex fission-fusion-based matriarchal societies centered around an older, dominant female or cow and her offspring and occasional younger sisters, the matriarch remaining the leader of the family until death, after which she is succeeded by her eldest daughter, even if her sister is present. The family units of elephants also associate with other families to form bond groups, though they are not restricted to following each other's movements. Several families or bond groups may also group together over long migrations, forming larger clans, usually consisting of 8 to 9 bond groups or between 16 to 20 families. Though the bonds within the clan aren't typically very strong, they do become territorial and defend their range when food is scarce. Males or bulls have a very different social life, typically leading an increasingly independent life as they grow up, only to be forced out by the females after reaching maturity. The bulls then lead a mostly solitary life, only occasionally grouping together with other males in bull groups of around 10 to 20 individuals. The bull group, as well as solitary male-male encounters, are defined by a distinct dominance hierarchy, depending on health, age, size and sexual condition. Older bulls dominating younger ones and dispersing any attempts at forming groups to challenge them though male elephants may use threat displays and engage in sparring, playful or otherwise. Legitimate fights are rare and limited mainly to mature males over territorial displays or as part of mate guarding behavior. The only time the males and females interact are during mating season, which happens only when a cow has reached her fertile period as well as when the male has entered a state of heightened testosterone known as must. While cows can be fertile multiple times, males only enter must once a year, typically during the dry season for younger males and wet season for the older ones. Must is characterized by testosterone levels increasing by up to 60 times that of normal levels, accompanied by an acute swelling of the temporal glands, followed by a constant state of highly aggressive behavior and excretion of a fluid known as temperin from the sides of their heads. Behavior which can lead the elephant to charge any animal without provocation. During this time, the bull will try to track and follow a potential mate and assess her condition by a collection of pheromones excreted from her urine. The bull then engages in a mate guarding behavior, following the female or multiple females to fend off other suitors. Once secured, the male will lay his trunk on the female's back to signal his desire to mount her. Most mating is successfully accomplished by older males during the wet season. An elephant pregnancy lasts two years, with interbirth intervals of four to five years. The extended pregnancy allowing the fetus to be born highly developed and able to quickly walk and use its trunk to collect food. A single calf is born 33 inches tall and weighing at around 260 pounds, while for the first few days the mother takes care to shield the calf from the rest of the herd. Once the calf is strong enough to keep up with the migration, it is greeted by all members of the herd by touching and caressing it as a sign of affection. The calf is then occasionally subjected to alloparenting or shared parenting by several females in the herd, usually the aunt or older sibling. While calves are largely dependent on nursing for the first six months, they can go on past two years before waning entirely around which time the calf starts to engage in more outwardly social bonding behavior, such as chasing other calves, as with the females, or play fighting, as with males. The female maturing at age 9, while the males take longer until age 14 or 15, though formal adulthood is only reached at age 18 for both sexes. The average life expectancy of elephants being 60 to 70 years, as elephants past adulthood are largely impervious to predation due to their immense size. Only larger predators and pack hunters such as lions, hyenas and African wild dogs targeting calves. As highly social animals, elephants have various forms of communication, using their trunks to greet other elephants by stroking or wrapping them together, trunk slaps or shoves to discipline calves and younger elephants, and to collect chemical information about each other by touching each other's mouths, temporal glands and genitalia, deriving information about the individual's health, age and status. Elephants also use a variety of calls, mostly produced through the larynx, but also occasionally modified through the trunk, including trumpeting used to express excitement, distress or aggression, roars and squeals during fighting, and bellows when wounded. Elephants have also been shown to communicate through seismics, 
by impacting the ground with their feet, the vibrations are carried for miles. Elephants on the receiving end are able to channel their vibrations through their front legs onto the ear canal. Highly intelligent, elephants have been shown to express self-awareness and cognition with extreme long-term memory. Especially of migratory patterns and locations of family members over a period of years, even decades. Further speculated to be capable of expressing emotion and concern about the welfare of their family members and those of their bond groups. Among the most recognizable African animals, the giraffe stands tall. Widely known for their distinctive and unique appearance, their only remaining living relative being the Okapi of the Congo. Giraffes are instantly recognized for their enormous necks and long legs, making each of the nine subspecies the tallest mammal in the world, the legs themselves taller than the average human. Spread out over nearly all of Sub-Saharan Africa, giraffes are also among the most ubiquitous herbivores of Africa. Found throughout savannas, grasslands and open woodlands, their long necks specifically developed to reach the primary food source of acacia leaves, though they can also survive on grass, fruits and shrubs. Most full-grown male giraffes or bulls standing at between 16 to 20 feet tall, weighing over 2,600 pounds, with females or cows being slightly smaller. Their large size and highly specialized diet leading giraffes to feed 16 to 20 hours a day, spending nearly the entire time standing up. Giraffes manage it by a process of rumination, or chewing, swallowing, regurgitating and then chewing it again, to maximize the nutritional intake, thus requiring less food than other animals of equivalent size as their food becomes more concentrated, only eating on average 75 pounds of foliage each day. Giraffes can be found as being either solitary, or in smaller groups of very open composition with few strong social bonds, another form of fission fusion society usually with uh, half a dozen individuals moving in the same general direction in proximity to each other, the largest groups coming together during the dry season when the food is scarce. The most stable groupings being those of a mother and her young, as well as a cohesive group between siblings and calves of similar age, with mixed sex groups known to frequently occur as a part of a broader social structure. Sub-adult bulls are the most outwardly social, engaging other bulls in play fighting and forming all male groups. While older males often become increasingly solitary and nomadic, giraffes are seldom territorial, but have clearly defined home ranges where they are centered around and returned to, greatly affecting the area through their feeding, often stripping trees down to the bark and giving so-called wastelines to taller trees, changing the very landscape through their feeding, particularly when moving in larger groups, as their impact is spread out over larger areas and are not confined to the migration pattern of a herd. Giraffe reproduction is generally polygamous, with a few older bulls mating with many fertile females. With no clearly defined mating season, it can instead occur at any time following maturation at age 3 to 4 years for cows and 4 to 5 years for bulls. Though bulls are often restricted in their maturation by the competition of any older mature male already in the area, delaying their development until they leave the area or the younger bulls challenges the older ones with victorious results. As bulls are continuously engaged in a strict dominance hierarchy within their overlapping territories, using their necks for combat in a behavior known as necking. Slamming together, rubbing and leaning on each other, even use their ossicones or small horns on the top of their heads as weapons. Though most matches don't lead to any serious injuries, there have been reports of broken necks and jaws and even death. Afterwards, the losing bull engages in a submissive mutual courting behavior to re-establish their social relationship, highly similar to male-female courting. Though bulls only engage in the courtship of females following a sampling of the cow's urine to assess her fertility through the presence of pheromones, once an estrus female is found, the bull begins courtship. The bulls emit loud coughing sounds to signal their intent, then engage in extensive mate-guarding behavior challenging other males in the area to duels as well, though a single bull may be guarding several cows over a larger area. Mating itself is typically brief and repeated. Afterwards, a gestation period at around 15 months commences, 
during which the cow returns to the place of her birth, a cross-generational calving ground. The cow gives birth while standing up, leading to the calf to fall up to six feet to the ground, though the extended gestational period also lends its highly developed leg muscles, allowing it to stand within an hour of being born. They are then nursed and cared for exclusively by the mother for the first nine months of its life. Though weaning starts already at four months with the introduction of solid foods, new mothers often gather in smaller nursery herds, seeking safety in numbers, occasionally featuring what is known as shared calfing pool, wherein calves are periodically left in the care of the herd, while the mother forages or drinks elsewhere temporarily. The other cows in the herd are looking after the calf. Though if a threat is detected, the other cows will only alert their own young. The other cows and calves often left to either take notice or follow, or face the threat alone. While cows share a strong bond of varying degree with their calf until the next calving, bulls play no active role in raising the young. Though unlike most other African herbivores, the males do exhibit friendly interaction with the calves when they come in direct contact. Male calves leaves their mothers at 15 months of age, either becoming solitary or joining old male groups while females often become solitary at 18 months of age, though remaining in the family territory until they themselves are impregnated. Though more than half of our calves don't survive their first year due to predation, adult giraffes generally being protected by their size from most predators except for lions, the average lifespan being 25 years. Calves are instead targeted by hyenas, African wild dogs and leopards alike. Though giraffes are typically silent, they have also been known to exhibit a few calls, ranging from infrasound being carried on for miles, inaudible to the human ear, to bellows between a mother and a calf, as well as mooing and mewing sounds of the calves themselves. and hissing and moaning calls of adults to call attention to a threat or to intimidate each other. While their hearts may be the biggest of any mammal on land at over 25 pounds, and they may be largely docile, giraffes have shown little concern for other giraffes, or indeed other animals at large, occasionally known to deviate from their herbivorous diet to ingest carrion even from other fallen giraffes when opportunity arises. From herds and clans, to families and loners, and mother and child, the herbivores of Africa come in all configurations, each employing different means of communication and interaction each having different social rules and norms to abide by. They all have one thing in common. They go through the seasons together as a part of a larger group, living in nature as a society.